Hey guys, welcome to another video from PT Final Exam. Today we're going to be talking about the pulmonary drainage positions and, and just quickly review what you need to know for the test on the NPT when they are talking about the pulmonary drainage positions. So I've got a couple of diagrams here, I'm gonna go over each of the segments in order. Hopefully we'll be able to keep it all sorted out. And honestly, that's just the hardest part of this whole thing is just keeping it all straight. All right, so first off, we're gonna start with the upper lobes, the apical segments, which are up at the apex of the lungs. The biggest thing here is that the, the patient is actually in a seated position, and they're leaning back about 30 degrees. And so they're in a seated position, leaning back. This image isn't quite right, but leaning back at about 30 degrees. And then you're gonna be clapping between the clavicle and the top of the scapula. So that's actually gonna be on the rear side here. You're gonna have them lean back and you'll be tapping up between the clavicle and the scapula on the top end. Basically just hitting those, those apical segments and you can hit bilateral both right and left in this position. So those are the upper lobes. Now as we talk about the posterior segments of the upper lobes, we're gonna have the bed flat again. This time the patient is leaning forward 30 degrees and the therapist claps over the back bilaterally. So again, they're gonna be clapping about right there. Remember when you're clapping, you used a, using a cupped hand. And as you use that cupped hand, you'll be able to help percuss or create percussion, allowing the drainage in the lungs to start moving using gravity to assist getting those the drainage out of the lung segments and into the, into the bronchioles and trying to get them up and out of the system. So that's the upper lobes, posterior segments. The patient is leaning forward 30 degrees. The upper lobes, anterior segments. So this is on the anterior portion of your chest. So this time you're gonna have the person lying supine. They'll actually be in a kind of a hook lying position. So you'll place a pillow under their knees, mostly for patient comfort. Have them flat. And then you'll be clapping between the clavicle and the nipple area. So a little bit higher up on the chest. And be using that cupped hand again and, and clapping, trying to get the drainage out of the upper lobes in the anterior segments. So the right middle lobe, this is where things start to get just a little bit funny. You elevate the feet 16 inches. So 16 inches of elevation on the feet. So this is what's called a Trendelenburg position where the head is lower than the feet. So then you'll have them lie on their back but then rotate a quarter turn up. And so for instance, if we're working on the right middle lobe, like what we have in this picture, the right middle lobe, we'll have them lie on their back and then rotate about a quarter turn or about 45 degrees. We'll stuff a pillow up underneath their hips. As you can see, that's what this is. There's a pillow stuffed underneath them that is helping them into a kind of a quarter turn position. You'll have your knees flexed again, just for comfort and trying to stick probably a couple pillows here up between the knees. And then the therapist will clap right over the nipple area. And so just a consideration when working with females or with the breast tissue, you'll be uh, doing the clapping just immediately below or immediately above the breast tissue, trying to get to the rib cage as much as possible in that area. Okay, so that's the right middle lobe. Talking about the left upper lobe, so now we're talking about the left side. It's essentially the same as the right middle lobe. We're gonna be about 16 inches up on the feet. You'll be lying down and then you'll be quarter turned to the right with knees flexed. Again, you can see how that's very similar to this last, from the last picture. You'll be clapping the hands over the left nipple area. So again, remember, you're trying to rotate the person into position so that the fluid or the discharge inside of their lungs is in a gravity assisted position that will help it come out of the lungs. All right, so now talking about the lower lobes, this is where we have the feet of the bed elevated 20 inches. So that's a big difference here when we're down into the lower lobes. Remember, you're elevating the feet just a bit more. So it's even more of a Trendelenburg position. They'll be side lying. A lot of times you'll see the image with the hand abducted over their head. So it's in full abduction, just so you can get to that, uh, get to the ribs. So you clap, because the therapist is clapping their hands over the lower rib cage area. So you have the person abduct their arm to get it out of the road. They're going to be side lying, arm raised and abduction, clap over the lower ribs. Now this is the same left versus right on these lower lobes, anterior basal segments. Same left, left versus right, you're going to be raised 20 inches. You'll have the arm abducted and you'll clap the hands over the lower rib area. 
So now talking about the lower lobes, the lateral basal segments. Remember, we were just talking about the anterior basal segments. Now we're talking about the lateral basal segments. The key difference here is, well, things that, things that are the same. Are you, you are still elevated 20 inches on the feet. So still in the Trendelenburg position. The patient is prone, but then a quarter turn rotated upward. And so, for instance, if you're working on, you have them, you're, you're trying to work on the right side, you'll have them lay flat and then lift that right side up just a little bit. Remember, you're trying to, just think of trying to drain water out of that lung or drain drainage out of that lung. And so, if you're working on the right side, you'll lift that right side up about a quarter turn. Again, you'll have the arm up into abduction. The arm and abduction allows you to clap your hands over the uppermost portion of the lower rib segments. So again, just remember you're trying to get this portion of the lung. And so the lower ribs, maybe the uppermost portion of the lower ribs. And this technique is the same left versus right, just like the other one. Uh, just when, like when we were talking about the anterior basal segments, it's the same left versus right. Uh, the lower, and I should make sure to make this distinction. It's not the exact same. It's just the opposite side line. Remember, you're going to be raising the right port. If you're working on the right side of, or the right lung, you'll have the right side of the body lifted. If you're working on the left lung, you'll have the left side of the body lifted. Okay, so talking about the, the lower lobes, posterior basal segments. So we've talked about anterior lateral, now posterior basal segments. You'll have the patient in prone. You'll still be 20 inches up. So you can see a theme here. All of the lower segments have the foot of the bed elevated 20 inches up in this Trendelenburg position. You will place a pillow under the hips, mostly for patient comfort, and the therapist is going to clap on the lower ribs close to the spine on each side. So obviously this is good for both right and left when they're in this position. The posterior basal segments. 20 inches up on the feet, patient is prone with pillow under their hips, and the therapist claps over the lower ribs close to the spine on each side. So then finally, the lower lobes, the superior segments of the lower lobes, you'll have the bed flat with a, the patient being prone with two pillows underneath their hips. So again, you're trying to just raise up their middle or in the hip area, trying to raise that up just a, a little bit. And you'll be clapping your hands over the middle of the back at the tip of the scapula bilaterally. So the bed is flat, patient is prone with two pillows under the hips, and then the therapist claps over the middle of the back at the tip of the scapula bilaterally. So that helps you get both sides of the lungs. All right, just a few precautions about pulmonary drainage. In the Trendelenburg position, as you remember, Trendelenburg is just where the head is lower than the feet. So when the head is lower than the feet, you have to be very cautious of, of congestive heart failure and hypertension. Just what it does is it creates extra fluid buildup in the head, cerebral tissue. You can get some pretty dramatic problems when you have too much pressure inside the head. Anyone with pulmonary edema or shortness of breath that's made worse with postural changes. And remember, these are precautions, not necessarily contraindications. So if a person has severe shortness of breath, when you put them into a supine or a Trendelenburg position, obviously you'd either need to change position or choose some other technique to get the drainage out. Obesity, abdominal distension, hiatal hernia, nausea, a recent meal, you can get some heartburn just when you have the person in a Trendelenburg position. For side-lying positions, again, you just wanna make sure there's no graft site. So if there was an axil axillofemoral bypass graft site, where they grabbed some, uh, some of the arterial tissue from the axilla that might cause some problems, as well as arthritis, rib fractures, or any sort of shoulder dysfunction, just discomfort lying on the side. So those are the precautions when it comes to pulmonary drainage techniques. Here's the source. And so just to review all of it one more time, we're gonna go real fast and go back to the very beginning. The upper lobes, you'll have the bed flat, patient is leaning back 30 degrees. Upper lobes, the posterior segments, you're having the patient lean forward 30 degrees. The upper lobes, anterior segments, you have the patient supine and then clapping between the clavicle and the nipple area. The right middle lobe, 
you have the foot of the bed elevated 16 inches. So see that? That's a big distinction here. 16 inches on the right middle lobe with a quarter turn. The left upper lobe or the lingular segment is just the exact opposite of that right middle lobe where you have the foot of the bed elevated 16 inches. Patients uh, are in the Trendelenburg position and a quarter turn to the right so that that left side is a little bit higher. The anterior basal segments of the lower lobes, you're 20 inches up, you're in side lying with the arm in abduction. Same right versus left, just opposite rotation, obviously. Lower lobes, the lateral basal segment, again, you're raised 20 inches. You're just a quarter turn rotated from prone. So put the person in prone and then quarter turn rotate them up. Use pillows to help you get it up. The same left versus right. The lower lobes, posterior basal segments, again, 20 inches up. Patient is prone, pillows under the hips. And remember, this person is just entirely prone at this point, and they're clapping, the therapist is clapping over the lower ribs close to the spine on each side. And then the posterior lobes, superior seg, or the, sorry, the lower lobes, superior segment, you have the person flat, you've got two pillows under their hips, and the therapist is clapping at the tip of the scapula bilaterally. And again, just some precautions related to the position more than anything. Thanks, guys. Appreciate you being a part of PT Final Exam. Check out our other videos here on YouTube or anywhere else and uh, hope, to, hope to see you on the other side. Thanks. Hey, guys. This is Will with PT Final Exam. Hope you enjoyed that video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. Check out all the other awesome videos we have here on YouTube or head over to ptfinalexam.com. Find lots of other great resources as you prepare for the NPT. So remember, this is the web's most awesome way to prepare for the NPT. Will Crane fist pumps all around. Thanks, guys.